We're here to look at a hive removal. I don't know if you can see the activity right here. They're in this fascia right here. A little bit of hard work, but what's aggravating about it? Somebody used two whole cans of wasp freeze on them. A bunch of dead bees up there. They they have no idea what they're doing because you know you can't get to the colony. You're not ever gonna kill the hive that way. All you're killing is foragers coming and going, wasting a bunch of time, wasting a bunch of money on wasp freeze. But with all that, you don't want that crap in your equipment. So as you're working on this stuff. You don't want to suck up any of those dead bees in your back. Depending on how deep they were able to spray, if they got on any comb, you don't want any of that comb. Have to throw it away. You don't want it in your equipment. You don't want to don't want to use the wax, especially if you're using it for skin products or something like that. You got anything good? <laughs> Probably not. So the sun is setting down. The bees are starting to set in. This is 628 Dirt Rooster, where hobby beekeeping is still a wonderful way of life. We're sitting out here watching the bees just feed off the sugar water and putting a few drops on top of the, the bottom of the jars and watching them come up top and feed off of it. And it's neat just to watch them suck it up. It's amazing how quick they can make just a few drops of sugar water disappear. Come on, girl. What's wrong with you? Put her up there, maybe she'll get feeling better. She looks a little awkward. Oh, down she goes. I think she must be one of those that's phasing out. <laughs> so, they're feeding a little pollen to the bees. Just uh, here it is, October, the November the 25th, and give them about a cup full of pollen a day. Just playing with them. Anyway, he said that this man from Kentucky said he keeps bees up there and said at the end of the year this time he pulls all honey off his hives. I believe he said he was running three or four hundred hives, but pulling all the honey off and not feeding them anything other than just a mixture of, uh, of sugar and what's the stuff I got by my coffee pot that I drink? Uh, uh, I what it is, the stuff in the bottle with the mother. Apple cider vinegar? Vinegar. Okay, you want to start over again? No, but it's sugar and vinegar somehow. I don't know. But when we get the recipe, we'll see if we can't post it with his permission. I was watching where they were putting a drop of sugar water on top of one of them other jars. Amazing the color difference of bees out of the same hive. I dumped my pollen bucket over. I'm rolling out this morning to go tackle a hive removal that uh, another beekeeper, surprisingly, with a whole lot more experience than myself, turned down the job. I think it's because it's on a ladder. <laughs> it's soffit removal on a ladder nobody likes those including myself i just left that house i went and set my ladder up and i uh, need another extension cord so i'm going to get some the uh the tenant came out and met me and was ta was asking me uh, you know do you have a bee suit do you have this and that and i'm like yeah i got i'm ready i got everything she says because the last people was out here didn't have anything I said, well, who was that? She said, and she said, yeah, they, they were the ones that were spraying. Right, this is our house. This is where you can see I've got my ladder set up on the side over there already. Really nice house, but uh, I don't care about all that. The nicest thing to me is it's got all that shade over there because this is on the east side 
of the house and, and it's uh, 10 a.m. and the sun would be cooking me if we didn't have all that shade. I'd have to wait and come back this afternoon. According to the tenant, Orkin's the one that came and tried to spray them. Drilled that hole in the soffit and was running around with wasp breeze. She said they, they were spraying and ducking and running. <laughs> They didn't have a. They didn't have suits. She said they just came out in regular clothes. So didn't know what they were doing. Didn't get the job done. I hope you didn't charge them. Are they in the house just in the soffit. All right, we've been getting our tool and power situation sorted out. They got no power outside the house, running course through the windows. So what we got to do is section that crown trim. And then that soffit, you can't probably can't see it from here. There's a seam in that soffit right about there. The uh, fascia board is probably data or grooved on the back where the soffit fits in. So I have to knock that fascia board loose, section the uh, crown, and get under get under the seam in that piece of soffit board and pull it down. And it looks like there's probably a division board. Uh, so soffit support in there that's stopping them from going any higher than right above that hole there. I just got to get my suit on. I already went up there and looked at them kind of close. They started tapping me in the head and since I'm going to be cutting and banging, I don't want to be up a ladder swatting. Shout out to my man Terry, Guardian B suit. Best B suit on the market or one of the best in my opinion. Super cool veil if you hadn't seen those yet. Got my son Jacob helping me this morning. He's about to take off for Dallas, Texas. Gonna be gone for a little while. And uh, I'm gonna use his last few days here to help me out. I don't know if you noticed, he's got a puffy eye already. <laughs> we ain't even started yet. It's from allergies though, it's not a beast thing. I started out with no gloves on. I'll probably finish up with no gloves on, but I pulled one piece of trim down before uh, it struck me that I forgot to light my smoker. And when I say it struck me, it happened to be a bee with a stinger. So smokers go on. I'm going back up to finish pulling that soffit out. Squirrel's been chewing there. Squirrels are bad about getting up in these spots and chewing holes. They got honey dripping out of the soffit already. And all I've done is stick a nail bar right up in the edge there. See it? You good? Yeah. They built that like they didn't want it to come apart. <laughs> uh, man, my neck and shoulders are killing me. That's why nobody likes to do these overhead soffit removals. It's hard work. Perched precariously on a ladder with two nail bars, a hammer, and a Dremel about uh, 14 foot up to the soffit. Probably the second most unpleasant thing about this removal, and it only falls just short of working overhead like this on a ladder, is the smell, because those cans are gone, but uh, when I can spray them, of course they didn't kill the colony, as you can see, but they killed a good number of bees, so the stench from that is horrible. If you've ever been around a lot of dead bees, it's rank, I mean, it's bad. freaking bees <laughs> good lord starts from there and goes all the way down yeah, wow. it's solid 
Wow. It's freaking 17 million bees up there. So the is that wood that they're on or is that like comb? That's comb. Wow. So it okay. Wow, Ari, do you see that? Mm-hmm. So that was all just like empty space before mm. the comb was there? Yeah. Wow, that's some good uh, honey, huh? Used to be. Yeah. It's not anymore. You smell that rotten smell? Yeah. That's dead well, bees. That's what's been, that's what I've been smelling in my bathroom. And I've been sneezing, 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 because I don't know if it's the actual bees and their, I don't know what the correct word is, dan I know it's dander for animals, like furry animals, but. Yeah. Every time I go in my bathroom, I start sneezing, and it's probably because this is my bathroom right here. Yeah. And I've been smelling like, smells kind of like mildewy. That's smell. those. That's those dead bees from when they tried to spray them. Mm. If they had killed the whole hive, you would have had that smell for a long time. Plus, all kind of insects come in. I'm sure come in to eat them, huh? Yeah. So are y'all gonna? Long I mean, they, you gotta scrape that out, or how do you get that out? You just pull yeah, it I out? Gotta, I gotta cut it out. Okay. Wow. So for you gotta come, well I guess you can come this way, hurry. That is honeycomb. There was nothing there before. So all of that is what the bees made. I smoked them up off the combs so you can get a good look. This is running down the soffit, going towards the back of the house. And it goes all the way down the corner. And then that's a pile of dead bees down the corner that they've been dragging down and cleaning out. Some of the damage right there, and right there is from me cutting. And otherwise, it was a super healthy uh, couple year old hive, and would have had some nice honey and brood in it. Still got some nice brood in it. I'll, come, I'll frame that up. And there's. Young larva and eggs. So we got a queen in here somewhere for sure. We pulled out, what, five, four good brood combs here. Hadn't seen a queen yet. I know we got one in there. Of course, we've got eggs. Uh, that's, that's six comb sections. Now, the first two were all honey. The next four were brood. And uh, they calmed down pretty quick, so I was able to take the suit off. Either that or they're just fans of Gas Monkey Garage. Nah, the hose is short enough, it won't hurt him. Huh? See this ice chest? What about the ice chest? This is my ice chest. It's clean. Yeah. It does not belong in the back of your truck for five years. <laughs> That's just crazy talk. <laughs> We got about six brood combs we're saving. That over there's a bucket of honey and pollen and trash. I've just been port letting the honey run out in this trash pile here. The ants or coons, whatever, get it. There's so much honey running out down the uh, edge of that roof. <laughs> that pool pump, pool filter is just covered with honey. I had to scoop my ladder over because it was all running out like I had just gone and gone through and cut all the combs wide open we're taking breaks see my pants are soaked my shirt's soaked it's hot out here uh, thankfully we're in the shade no breeze but shade and it's not unbearable just having to take breaks and drink plenty of water eat plenty of little caesar's pizza we'll get it done we're about a little over halfway at this point
Have to get it knocked out. Still got a little more honey to cut out. That's it. It's all buttoned back up. Side of the house is washed off. And we out. <laughs> and to have them pop inside my have it pop. The blister popped in my mouth. You can taste it. There's two of them in there. <laughs> Did they stung you inside here? No, they got it here, but it swelled up so much within like 20 minutes, it pushed it made blisters on the inside of my mouth. And it's one oh, on each wow. side and it popped within an hour. It's <laughs> taste sitting I'm up there. Oh man. <laughs> well, sometimes these things don't always turn out uh, just how we want them to. So I had to pull Jimmy in to pick up my slack on this one. I uh, thought I had them. Pretty sure I did, but it's a chance I missed them. What happened on this hive, uh, you saw the hole in the soffit. The company that wanted me to come do this was a property management company. The house was a rental, about to be under contract for sale. So the deal was I get the bees out, they fix the soffit immediately or as soon as possible <clears throat> to prevent this from happening again. Well, I get the bees out, pretty sure I did. It's a possibility I missed something because there was a lot of tight spaces in there. They could have gone in that lower soffit or uh, up a little higher and hidden and you know, I could, I could have missed them. But, uh, two weeks three weeks after the fact i start getting calls that they're seeing bees again and this all was done june or july maybe i don't know i can't remember i'll have to look it up but it was still smoldering hot still good chance they could have caught another swarm which is what i think happened but in any case my friend jimmy come come in for me like a champ i was having to leave town he got the job done and we're fishing to look at the bees See what they look like now. This is November, this is December 2nd. And these were pulled out, what, uh, end of August or something? Yeah, about that. I started feeding them uh, about three weeks ago. They're looking good. Got a little, kind of a little yellow in there. May, may have had a little taste of some golden rod. Yep, got a little bit of yellow on them. Got some good, good brood going still. This is, like I say, December 2nd. And they're still laying and all that good stuff. I don't know how you don't get stung. I'm just waiting for it. How, who don't? <laughs> You'll see. They'll, they'll understand in a minute. When you add that picture. <laughs> But yeah, they've done really well since they've been here. And got a internal feeder on them. That's what this black thing is. For those of you who don't know, this is an internal feeder. The bees walk through here. It holds a gallon, I a think. Gallon. They be eating three days. So they emptied out a gallon in three days. Yep. So every three days, I got to come by getting these filled again. But I'll do that tomorrow. And they're starting to work the other side as well. Yeah. So when get deal. a little further done with that one. I'll add some more yeah. full frames in. Looking good. Like I was telling you earlier, we had a bad problem with moths this year, so I put that small opening in the front to help while, they, while they're still growing and right. try to fend off some of the, some of the yeah. moths. Got them reduced down on all of them or just this one? Just this one. Because this one isn't a full, full right. one yet. These other two are... Yeah, they're doing pretty well. This is These are all... All the hives started last year. Or grew last year. I off the one I bought the weekend or the summer before. Got me. No, already? We just got in them. <laughs> that burns. Yeah. They got me. Head stings don't feel good. No, I mean, yeah. You see my past experience of head, head stings. <laughs> So this all came off the first hive that I, I started, which is this other one. It's been nicknamed Red's Tower of Death. <laughs> so we won't open that one. It's pretty, um, pretty strong, pretty aggressive. I don't know why. The ones we've gotten off that haven't been as aggressive. But every time I open this one, I get stung. I swell up. It's not fun for anybody, <laughs> unless you're watching. 
<laughs> All right, we don't have to open it. Sure? <laughs> yeah, yeah, we're good. So we start that. Um, That's Red's Tower of Death. Red's Tower of Death. Well, they're looking good. Yeah, we'll grow some more this year. I just had to pick one out of my hair. <laughs> <laughs> Me too. You saw, you saw where I had that, where I pulled the hive out, right? Yes. Papa, where were they? So bees when you found them. Today. All you had to do was look on the other side of that little fire break, and there was another three foot of hive. Another mm -hmm. three foot. They moved. They moved up. They did. So yeah, there was three feet on the back side by what it was about two foot wide. Was it new comb or old comb? Both. You just I don't my bad. You didn't hear it hum. Because you, when I got up there close, you could hear it humming through the. I was dead silent when I left. Mm -hmm. There's a few in there. You see what they did to me. <laughs> <laughs> well, we got it taken care of anyway. <laughs>